Hello, and thank you for joining me again. Today, we're going to get back to the story with Steve. Now, you heard yesterday how important it was for him to create the hypnotic context, to assess the situation, to see what approach he should take. Let's turn to a story with Steve now, to look at how he used his attitude, or rapport, as we refer to it in this recording, that enabled him to make consistently 50 or 100% more in tips compared to the other more experienced waiters in the restaurant. Uh, you mentioned already you're pretty good with rapport and stuff already. So what mm -hmm. kind of things did you do for the rapport and how was it different with your um, colleagues versus with customers coming in to eat the restaurant? Well, I would, before I even approach a table, I would kind of assess who they are and the kind of mood they're in. Mm -hmm. yeah, if they come in and they're in a happy mood, then I'm going to walk up at the table with a smile on my face. You know, mm -hmm. it's the whole matching marrying thing with uh, with NLP, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the way I would approach it. And really, just strike up a conversation with them. I wouldn't even get into the food necessarily immediately. Just hey, how right. you doing tonight? You know, I hope yeah. You know, talk about the weather for a second, or you know, mention something about them that it would make them feel good. Oh, that's a beautiful dress. You know, that's fantastic. My girlfriend would love that. Where'd you get that? Right. Uh, so you know, if, if I can just pause you there again. So essentially, what you're doing is your rapport was a mixture of setting the context. So you're getting into a conversation with them. So rather mm -hmm. than having the context be, I'm going to take your order now, which is a very um, mechanical context, which doesn't allow for very much room to maneuver. You broke that classic server uh, customer context and created a more conversational context where these skills would actually fit into. Is that correct? Exactly. And so then that, that was part of your rapport building at the same time, right? Absolutely. Yeah, because you know, when I first started out, especially working at a fine dining restaurant, I mean, we were black tie. You know, we, we had to walk in there and everything had to be perfect from the time people sat down. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of leads to a very uptight attitude. Yes, because it's more, yeah. it's actually yourself being uh, sucked into this role that doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily appropriate, but you're almost responding to your own anxieties. And so you're uh, shutting off your own positive emotions, which means you're shutting off any ability to create rapport, right? Sure. Yeah. Go on. Uh, yeah, well, you know, and, and just introducing myself as, you know, their friend. I'm just here to take care of you. Have a good time tonight. We want to, you know, I want everybody to have a good time. Great. You know, so I, so let, me, let, let, me, let me just uh, let me recap that again. So one sure. of the major things you do as a rapport, which is excellent, it fits exactly what we're talking about, is you imagined yourself their friend and you made it your job to be friendly like that and to try and make them feel um, comfortable like a host at a party or something. Would that be fair to say? Sure, exactly. That's, that's the whole point. You know, people go out because they want to have a good time. Right. Right. Uh, I, most of them, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Some of them just go out because they don't want to cook. Yes. Uh, w which can be good or bad. They may come out in a good mood, or they may be in a bad mood when they when they you know sit so down at the table. When someone was in a quieter mood or a bad mood, how did you deal with that? Uh, if people were quieter, I would be a little more reserved myself mm -hmm. and, and slowly introduce conversation as we went through the meal. If it, but I'm always I was always looking for body language and you know of course the the facial the micro muscle movements of the face right. because I you know I wanted to know that if what I'm doing is is helping them or not. If 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 I don't see that they're benefiting from the conversation, then I'm going to back away and just let them do what they need to do, and you know, enjoy their meal or not. Right. Uh, <laughs> as long as the so food tasted fantastic, of, that was that was great. Part of your uh, attitude and which built, built rapport was this idea of friendship and so on. But another part was, am I actually being of service? Am I being actually is my level of interaction right now being valuable to them? So there's a a real sense of you're in it for them, not just for yourself. Correct. Well, yeah, exactly, and you know that's that's the way I've always treated my clients too, because it, it's all about it's all about the person in front of me. It's not about me. It's not about my communication. It's about the way they perceive my communication. Excellent. So you had so you had your initial context being set. Um, you used your language, something initially more clumsily, which got got you to really <laughs> understand when the context is being broken or when it's getting close to being broken. Right. Uh, and then, of course, you got better over time. Meanwhile, you started building uh, rapport with people, and your attitude. The two core ideas in your attitude, one was, you know, these people are my friends. I'm going to treat them in a friendly way, make them feel comfortable. And number two, um, I want them to have a good experience. So, you know, uh, you know, is what I'm doing right now helping them have a better experience? If it is, do more of it. If it isn't, just back off a little bit and, and maybe try something else or at least just leave them be on their own. 
if, if you couldn't figure out how to do that. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. I'd like to reiterate the point of how Steve understood that he needed to make people feel comfortable at the restaurant. And therefore, he'd mirror their attitudes of the client. Now, this is key. As he mentioned, if someone's quiet, they don't want to come up and be loud and brash or boisterous because that would jar someone and make their critical factor immediately flare up. Steve was also using his language cards to practice integrating hypnotic language into his service. In the next audio, you'll hear more about how Steve started combining or stacking hypnotic language pattern into his conversations in a very natural yet very purposeful sort of way. In fact, once Steve had set the hypnotic context and was congruent with his hypnotic attitude, his rapport, it was the use of the hypnotic language phrases from the hypnotic language cards that were the reason that he quickly went from one of the lowest paid waiters to consistently getting 50% to 100% more in tips than every other, even more experienced waiters in the restaurant. And you'll hear how Steve did it in our next session, where we'll focus on the hypnotic flow.